Hello future investors and welcome back to another weekly episode but this is once again another Sunday special in the series with the very awesome Stack Collector. Hello mate, how are you? Uh, you know, welcome to another Sunday episode. It's awesome to have you here, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome, mate. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for having me across again. It is an absolutely beautiful day and I'm very happy to be here. Oh, awesome stuff, mate. I'm absolutely loving this weekend series. Um, I was getting a really good response from everyone as well, which just makes me very, very happy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's start off with the chat. I'll hand over the reins to you because I know you, you briefly mentioned to me before we came on live that there was a good couple of interesting topics that you wanted to talk about. So I'll pass it over to you to start the episode. Thank you very much. Yes, I did. I wanted to bring up, uh, well, an asset that both of us have spoke about and uh, both of us think is a good asset. It's the S&P 500. Um, I've been contacted somebody, by somebody throughout the week because um, they've, they're have they looking to invest into the S&P 500. And uh, one thing we haven't mentioned in the past is, uh, is when you are investing into an ETF of the S&P 500, if there isn't just one to invest into, there's a multitude of... Um, of them so what i wanted to do is just basically go into a little bit of brief detail as why that is and why you can have different assets that are all for the s p 500 yeah brilliant mate I, I i've had a few questions on that as well and actually i think uh the same email f from from one of our subscribers that we both have and yeah i can totally understand how they're how they're confused with the s p 500 because it is there's so many variables to it so yeah i mean feel free to start off the discussion about that because it's uh it's a very good topic to cover yeah no it and it is it is and, it, and as i say it's something that i have forgot to uh, to mention myself uh, in the past so uh basically the reason for that is so i trade on etoro personally and i know on etoro you can invest directly into the s p 500 through the spx 500 ticker sign uh but that's not necessarily what most people invest into now my investment into the s p 500 is under the vanguard voo ETF uh, and there's a couple of Vanguard ETFs which are all worth considering but the reason they are different is as you may probably know if you've been looking into the S&P 500 they are it is comprised of and I know you know this future but uh, it's comprised of the top 500 companies in America okay and what the ETFs do is they choose amongst those companies as to which they're going to put the money into so they can be weighted slightly differently whereas one etf may be more weighted into amazon and another one might be more weighted into apple and depending on which one of those two companies is doing better then that etf will perform slightly better or slightly worse they are all based on the s p 500 and they are do all include um the companies that comprise the S&P 500, but they can be slightly different. And it is definitely worthwhile looking into, uh, you know, how that asset is performing um, when when you look to invest. Uh, and I was just interested to ask her, which, uh, which ETF do you invest through future? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, actually. Um, I mean, the, the S&P 500 is still very, very new to me, even as an investor who, who you know, makes this content. Um, but yeah, uh, I so I currently have uh, the S and P five hundred Vanguard uh, through the app Trading two one two in an ISA uh, as it's tax free and you can invest up to twenty thousand pounds a year tax free and obviously you'll be able to take it out uh, when you want to take it out tax free as well. Um, I use the V U A A G I believe it is or it's V U U A G. Uh, for the British pound sterling trading because obviously being British and in England I want to actually trade in British pound but I will be totally honest uh, that information you've just given me is something I didn't know that there was uh, certain options that actually um, choose like uh, a variation between the S&P 500 and prefer prefer you know um, certain categories um, I mean, currently, I'm very happy with mine, and I'm not going to be changing it, because as far as I'm concerned, I believe it's all right. Um, you know, it's in British pounds, it's in a tax-free ISA, it is the main S&P 500, and, and since I've had that investment, it's always been up. Um, 
So I'm very, very pleased with that. And yeah, I mean, I think yesterday my my investment, you know, at the first of every month went in and, and I'm still up, which is fantastic. So yeah, very pleased with that. But um, maybe I need to look into the actual, uh, in particular, specific index that you're referring to, because off the top of my head, I, I don't actually know the answer to that one. Um, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean... I'm very. I'm actually very happy you said that you V U A G because I um as I say I don't trade on trading two one two. But let me explain. The only reason for that is when I looked to start getting into investing, it was um, during all the lockdowns etc. Um, trading two one two as a platform it was so full they weren't taking any more accounts, so you couldn't physically open an account at the time you had to go into a waiting list uh, and because you know time in the market beats time in the market I wanted to get uh, you know I wanted to get those investments open and get investing into those so I ended up using eToro and that is the only reason I use eToro which is an American based platform and does trade more on the uh, New York exchange, exchange whereas I know from looking onto trading to and to recently um, it's more it seems to be more Euro European based I when I looked into the S and P five hundred ETFs on trading two one two myself, there were two that stood out to me, uh, which was as you said there was the V U A G, and there was also the um, V U, I think it was V U A A, and uh, they were both seemed like they were decent enough assets the uh, however VUAA currently on a 12 month per period is uh, 2.448% up whereas the VUAG the one you chose is 3.97% up so I'm very happy to say that's actually the one I uh, I recommended out of the ones available so very good choice there by yourself future i mean i think that personally from what i saw on trading 212 that uh, it does seem to be a very good uh, asset and does seem to be as you say the uh, the london exchange version of the voo which is what i trade in on eToro eToro um does say i do i think i mentioned to you before i've uh, i've got an older um uh, an account which uh, that was open about I think around eight years ago uh, that uh, that was through Fidelity uh, which is a great platform and that's the platform I've got my um, investment ISA on which like yourself I is something that if you are out there and you are uh, like the subscribers contacted myself in future this week and you are new to all this and you are looking into getting your money uh, into stocks and shares or, or you know a commodity etc uh, an investment ISA is definitely the way to do it because uh, as futures mentioned previously there's a £20,000 per year um, tax free limit that you can save through an uh, investment ISA so it is an absolutely brilliant way to open an investment portfolio and one, one that I also just like you to recommend myself yeah I mean I don't really need to touch an awful lot on that because you, you like you really covered it very very well I mean I just repeat what we went over but um, you know I think if you are looking at getting an S&P 500 first of all great mindset great decision if you're thinking about it because it's a fantastic investment it's relatively if not very low risk if i'm honest with you um and over a long term period you've got a really positive chance of having a high returning yield um as index funds are very safe they're very very diversified unlike just buying maybe stock in tesco's walmart maybe tesla on its own which can have r quite high risk because if something happens to that company you can lose all of your money. Whereas with an S&P 500, you can invest monthly on a regular basis or sporadically whenever you like. And what it does is it takes that money and it completely spreads it across those 500 top companies in the United States. Now, what that is doing is, although it's putting small amounts of money into a vast majority of companies, it's spreading your risk. So it's giving you more potential to make profit because it's spreading that risk, but it's also still investing in many, many different companies. Um, and what will happen over a long period of time is, of course, if you're doing it as a long term position, which you really should be, then pots will increase. So essentially what you're doing is you're trickling money into 500 top companies in the United States and maybe 20 years down the line, all of those trickles of cash that you've been spreading across will have actually filled up those pots 
So you will actually have quite a substantial investment across a multitude of really, really good companies. So yeah, very, very well uh, described there, uh, mate, on, on, in regards to the S&P 500. We're clearly both big fans. Um, I know you've spoke about it a lot before and, and you've had it a lot longer than me and you've actually seen some great yields on your on your money. And the good thing is, you know, you can leave it in there. It's an asset that, you know, really is a passive investment. You know, you can stick the money in there. You can set up a, an automatic, you know, direct debit for it to come out and just let it work for you. It's, it's actually quite so safe, to be honest with you. you. You could almost not check it, you know, and just let it work for you. So it's a very, very good hands-off investment for those people who don't want to be getting physically hands-on all the time with an investment yeah no you're you're absolutely right there and uh and yeah I can, it, it definitely seems like it's something we both recommend which uh i think i think the reason for that is it, it, it's a good asset to to look into as especially as a beginner um i think you've mentioned yourself previously it's not the higher highest risk uh which means it is better as a long-term investment um you know but uh, yeah, no, I absolutely uh, agree with everything you've just said there as well. Brilliant, mate. Yeah, thank you, mate. A really, really good topic. And, and it was good that you brought it up, actually, because a lot of questions do come up about the S&P 500. So uh, moving on, I'd actually like to talk about something that's very popular, both on our channels. It's the precious metals market. Um, I'd like to just quickly delve into some of the current prices uh, for those that want to hear it. Um, currently, gold is sitting at £1,573 per ounce of gold. That's actually down 0.17% from last week. Um, but it's kind of been sitting around that price. I mean, I haven't been monitoring it an awful lot, but it seems like a high £1,500 is kind of the happy sitting rate for gold right now. Uh, looking on to gold, uh, the current price is actually £19 and one pence uh, it's actually up 0.5 percent uh from last week so silver's actually performing very well i did see on the financial news that there's a bit of a bull run on silver at the moment and a bull run is essentially where something good happens in the market people see there's money to be made so everybody rushes to it and it's that's a bit what a bit like what happened to bitcoin when when the bitcoin bubble came um there was a bull market rush on bitcoin um, so yeah, silver's actually performing up right now, so good for silver holders. Um, Bitcoin, if we move on to cryptocurrencies, uh, it's currently sitting at £21,637. It's actually down 0.35% from last week. That's actually £75 down because it's such a valuable, you know, uh, per coin it's so valuable, even a small percentage down can make a big difference in terms of value droppage uh, and then also if we look at platinum and palladium they are both down also so in terms of pricing it's not particularly a great time for precious metals maybe it is if you're looking to buy but if you're holding maybe you're looking at selling all of your stack if you're maybe at the end of your stacking term probably not the best time to consider selling but uh, yeah overall gold uh, overall silver seems to be the outperforming asset between all of the precious metals right now so yeah very very interesting on that one yeah it's very interesting indeed um now what i'll say with silver is i think i i mentioned it last week uh 19 pounds is 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 pretty much where i think silver is at the moment i think uh i think that's sitting about where it where it should be uh, a great week though it has risen uh i think about 15 pence per ounce but as you say um percentage wise it's i mean it is a, it is a good good percentage i do think it's going silver is going to keep going up going up i think next week we're going to see a continued increase in silver uh gold at the moment i i think we may see that either hover where it is or maybe drop a little bit by next week um there's there's quite a bit going off in the in the market at the moment but i do think as you said yourself silver's doing silver's very strong at the moment uh it's <clears throat> it's not i wouldn't say it's particularly low or particularly high at the moment so it's it's difficult to say which way it's going to go um yes uh go, going back on what you said about a bull run uh i just want to say to to any new investors out there uh, if you ever hear any anyone refer to something going bullish that's exactly what it means uh it means it's it you know it's it's having a bull run uh, it's it's in, having a vast increase like future just just mentioned um but yeah unfortunately i personally 
don't track crypto. I don't invest in crypto. It's something that I, I don't look at. So I don't really have a lot to input on that. It's not something I, I know too much about because I, I stay clear of it myself. But uh, it's great to hear how it's performing for everybody else who, who is investing in crypto. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, and I'm like yourself, mate. I mean, I, I don't actually hold any investments in, in crypto. Maybe in the future, I might consider it. But really, my investments kind of uh, right now, at least they're, they're long term safe investments, multiple multitude of, of, of long term safe investments. Maybe as my financial knowledge increases, uh, I'll probably diversify into some more risky assets. But as of now, yeah, definitely no crypto for me. But just moving back onto silver. It's really nice for it to to see it kind of go over this nineteen pound mark. Um, I've sort of seen it sitting around the eighteen pound mark, obviously high eighteen pound for for a while, fluctuating up and down. Um, so seeing it sit at nineteen is quite nice. Uh, I would like to see it soon kind of sit at a, a consistent twenty pound um, per ounce. I definitely think that's doable. Like you said, I, I think there's a silver price increase coming. There's a bit of a bull run on it at the moment, being an industrial metal. We, we've talked about it before, you know, the usage is going up. Um, I would like to see silver silver sit at around a comfortable £20 per ounce. Uh, although I'm not really buying much precious metals for the rest of this year, actually. Uh, I'm going to be doing an episode on that, so I won't touch on it too much, but... My goals have changed now as I've, I've reached my stacking goals for this year. I achieved it nice and early, which was fantastic. Um, so now I'm I'm putting all of my capital, I'd say 90, 90%, 95% of my savings capital away each month for, for a buy-to-let in the future. Um, talking about, you know, a buy-to-let property, if you're not sure what that is, that's essentially buying a property to rent out on a, on a rental market. I'll be looking at doing it interest only to... Um, recoup uh, revenue faster and quicker so then I can therefore save up more income quickly and therefore buy another property and and, and hopefully a knock-on effect there but talking about property you've recently uploaded an episode on your your house tour and it was awesome to see Um, very very nice house I mean it needs some work clearly but it's a great investment in my opinion because once you've refurbished that house to how you want it I think not only is it going to be a lovely home, um, it's going to increase the value substantially. So, yeah, very nice. I'm, I'm sure you'll want to touch on that. Yeah, no, thank, thank you so much, Future. And it's uh, it's amazing to be, you know, starting to get in there and starting to do, you know, really push up the, on the work. I've, I've been down there the last couple of days uh, slogging away, just trying to get on top of things. But uh, it, it's re- it is really great to, to get there. And as you said, I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant investment. It does need some work doing to it. Nothing structural, nothing major, just uh, just a lot of little bits and bobs, which which fortunately, um, you know, with me having my own business, I, I, I'm able to do most of the work myself. Uh, I've had to get somebody to install the new gas boiler, which has been done at the moment. But other than that, pretty much there's not anything that needs to do that I can't do myself to save on uh, contract free fees, etc. So, yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping within a very short period of time, I will see the value uh, jump up quite a bit once I've got on top of it and I've, I've you know, I've, I've modernised it a little bit and made it uh, more homely as it was. Um, I definitely think it's a great investment. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's some that's which is something that I wanted to bring up myself actually because you've been uh, you've been working your way through Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki uh, and uh, you know as we both said ourselves previously it's uh, it, it that is the, that's the book I recommend to people if they ever come to me and say they're interested in in investing uh, I, I you know I tell them to read Rich Rich Dad Poor Dad first first off you know it, it is an amazing reference source um you were going through some quotes the other day weren't you in one of your videos and uh, and you know even just rehearing them it was it was absolutely brilliant and i agree with every single one of them but it's a very interesting point because robert kiyosaki has a very uh, interesting philosophy when it comes to um to property because he would he would consider that as a liability wasn't wouldn't he yeah yeah you're, you're absolutely right um i mean 
the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, fantastic book. I couldn't say good enough things about it. I've literally finished it a couple of days ago, and I've, I've funnily enough, I've just bought a new one, which I'll get onto in a moment. But um, yeah, you're right. He was always a bit dubious about property in terms of actually owning it for yourself. He loved buying it, renting it out, buying duplexes, and and you know buildings with multiple rooms in and etc. Um, but he he did say buying a property for yourself to live in is is a liability because in his eyes um it's a it's something that takes money out of your pocket and not put money into your pocket and I can understand where he's coming from yes a property technically does take money out of your pocket you've got to pay a mortgage essentially it's a debt that you're paying to the bank to pay that loan off to own your house um and I understand the concept of his of his thinking behind here. I know Grant Cordone, a very successful investor, has also said similar things. Uh, but it's easy for them to say, in my opinion, because they're completely successful. They're multi multi millionaires. They don't have to financially worry. Um, you know, they could stop working tomorrow. They could take all of their investments out and liquidate, and they'd, they'd have more money than than anything. But uh, for an average person like my, me or yourself or people watching, we're building up that wealth. We're building up that financial intelligence. So in my opinion, I think having a property is a smart thing in contrast to what they say. You know, I think it's good to have bricks and water to 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 have a safe place because you know, although we're trying to better our financial uh, intelligence and make wise investments, that's all very well. And I'm sure it will pay off in the future, but you never know what's around the corner. And the last thing you want to have to do is also be renting as well. And in my opinion, I don't really understand their, 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 their philosophy on it also, because when you retire, do you really want to be paying a rental income throughout all of your retirement? You've worked all those years making wise investments to maybe get financially very comfortable just for so much of it to be eaten up by a rental income to pay someone else's mortgage. Uh, I just personally, that that's not for me. I want to I want to retire early. I want to have no mortgage and I want to I want to have no debts to anyone. I want to be completely financially independent. So, yeah, I mean, you, you may have some separate thoughts on that. Uh, but otherwise, it's a fantastic book. I thoroughly love it. And don't don't let that put you off from reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because it shouldn't, because the book has so much knowledge in it. Like you yourself said, the quotes that he has in that book and the, the information is well worth it. Just just to touch on one of the quotes that sticks in my head is that the, the poor criticize and the rich analyze. And it's so true The, the you know, wealthy people look at it as, as, as and they would say, how can I afford this? Whereas a poorer person with a poorer mindset would say, I can't afford this. So there's so much to be gained from reading that book. So touching on the fact that they're sort of against owning a property, definitely still read the book. But I mean, what are your thoughts on that, mate? Yeah, no, uh, there was a reason I, I brought it up, to be honest with you. And you've, you've, you've touched on that yourself. Uh, and it's, it is a brilliant book and everyone should read it. But um, one of the reasons I wanted to bring that up myself is, as you've said, uh, everybody's situation is different. Uh, you can't come into this as a beginner expecting to be able to invest in the same way as one of these multi-million investors can, can invest. Uh, just like you've said you, yourself uh, perfectly well, you, you know, they they have money to, to invest in a very different way. And, and if you're beginning, you have to work your way up to that. So when you're reading these books, whoever's book it is, whether it's Robert Kiyosaki, Graham Stevens, or, or any of the other great investors out there, you know, take on board what they say say but don't necessarily follow it word by word you know it's it's more about taking a lesson from the teaching and applying that to your own situation rather than using it as, as a checklist and saying right that's what i do first that's what i do next that's what i do next most of the time it is the best idea to own a property now it, he's right in what he's saying it is a liability in the sense that it does cost you money to to have your own house anybody who owns a house will know you know you there's, there's works you need to do uh decorations uh renovations if if you know if there's a bad storm and, and 10 of your roof tiles fly off you got to pay for a roof to come out and fix it one of your leaks uh, pipes leak you've got to pay for a plumber to come out and fix it now a lot of these things might be covered under insurance they, they might not not be but there isn't liability ex um there isn't a, you know aspect of owning a property 
but that doesn't stop it being an investment because that property will i can't say for definite but will increase in value over time so when i look to cash out like you say at retirement aid or i may even want to uh just think you know what i i can't afford to live here so you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to move stop rent what i would rent anyway but i'm not going to sell this i'm going to rent it out to somebody else make a bit of profit on it it's a bit of extra money coming in so it's you know it's not that owning a property is a bad idea i i agree with you certainly for the you know the earlier investors it's a it's a brilliant thing to do to get yourself on that property ladder it it, it is an asset but it is it, it is also a liability which is why i wanted to bring uh property up because it is if it, there's a grey area when it comes to a couple of things like uh, your, your motor vehicle, your car's one thing. Again, it's a liability. But I could not personally run my business without my transport. So although it is a liability because I'm, I'm forever putting diesel in it, I've got to pay for the MOT, I've got to pay for the insurance, I've got to pay for road tax, I've got to pay for repairs, etc. Um, it is still an asset to my business. So some things that are liabilities can also... Um, reside within the asset column as well and it can be a bit of a venn diagram with a little bit of a you know a mix in the middle so uh yeah i mean you you answered it perfectly yourself but i just wanted to uh basically compound on that myself and just say yeah it, although it's uh you know you people like robert kiyosaki will say it's not the best idea uh he, you know he can he he's free to go and live where only wherever he wants at the drop of a hat and if he's ever got a problem his landlord comes and fixes it and he can afford to pay that bit extra for that um for that privilege but as you say we're not multi-million invest multi-million pound investors we're, we're normal people that uh, have great you know we're 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 on our own investing journey and uh and we're looking to get to a place where we want to be in the future yeah very well said matt and i love the fact that you said everyone's financial circumstances is different and it's so true you know these books are fantastic and i'm so really really loving bettering my financial intelligence because it's only going to help me invest better and have a faster financially free better future but it really does come down to your own financial circumstances and take the books with a pinch of salt because it's coming from a perspective of usually an american or an englishman who's very already very wealthy and you've got to start somewhere and, and and also touching on that i think it's easy especially in this day and age with social media to see people really especially friends and family that are doing well or at least appear to be doing well and it's hard sometimes to to not feel like you're getting left behind how are they achieving this and, and things like that so if i could give anyone any advice i would say try and stick in your own lane keep your mind to yourself if you can network with people like like-minded people like i am doing with the stack collector like the stack collector is doing with me and other youtubers and stuff like that that's really beneficial but in terms of your own investments and financial goals i would keep a lot of it to yourself let your success do the talking for you because most people aren't happy for you to succeed or whether they say that or not um so yeah stick to your own financial goals stick to your own financial plans try not to get too um distracted or you know focused on what other people are doing focus on what you want to achieve work out when you want to achieve it and how you can achieve it and don't starve yourself of life you still got to have enjoyment but try and do a happy medium there's a good saying you know it's all about work-life balance and that's the same thing when it comes to investing it's all that you know as well it's all about investing balance so stick to your own goals stick to your own lane take advice use people as motivation but try not to get too caught up in what other people are doing because you've all got your your own circumstances and different goals etc but uh yeah talking about the books i've ordered a new book recently uh, in fact recently i ordered it less than an hour ago funnily enough and it's by andrew craig and it was actually recommended to me by one of the best current youtubers out there 365 days of silver he's just hit that 7000 subscribers and very well deserved too he recommended to me how to own the world as i said by andrew craig so i've just ordered that and again i'm looking forward to that coming because i'm going to be able to dig deep into that and 
uh, and invest in my own mindset and my own financial intelligence because it's all very well investing financially but you should be investing in your own financial intelligence to make sure you're you're on the right track and you're doing the right things but what about you the stack collector i know you're very busy at the minute you've got your company which is doing very well and you've recently moved into your property which is obviously going to keep you very very busy so uh thank you for coming to do this today because you could have could have quite easily and rightly so said i can't do it today um but when you maybe do get time to chill out do you sort of read any investment books to try and better your financial knowledge or maybe speaking books or or communication books anything like that yeah no you hit the nail on the head there i uh, i utilize audio books uh because i don't have it like so i don't have the time to sit there and read a book but while i'm working i can have an audio book on in the background and i can i can hit two things at one time i could be outside because uh, you know as i mentioned before my my uh business is a tree surgery and landscape gardening so a lot of the time i can just put my earphones in uh, put the audio book on and just crack on with the work and uh, and as i say i'm out earning money and still you know bettering my financial intelligence as you would say so uh, how to how to own the world is an amazing book uh, a great recommendation by 365 days of silver he you know as you say he is he i know just from watching his videos and i've known this for a long time that he's got a great investing mindset uh I pretty much agree with everything he says. You know, he he he, he takes words out of my mouth when on his videos um, when it comes to investing and and you know, this this I've never heard him say anything that's overtly wrong. Um, you know, he's done a couple of videos recently about purchasing power and the effect inflation has on on your hard cash, which I think was was brilliant. So yeah, definitely a channel that's worth checking out if anyone by any chance has, hasn't done so already. Uh, but as I say, when it comes to uh, to taking in that kind of information, it's it, I, I more do podcasts or um, as I say, audio books. Um, just just so I can tie it in a little little better around my uh, around my schedule yeah awesome mate i mean fantastic yeah i completely agree with you and and you're right 365 is so financially intelligent and and that was one of the best things i ever did uh networking you know um it was a long time where i wanted to invest i had lots of money but i had no clue how to do it the entry for me into this world was precious metals um but without networking i wouldn't be at half anywhere near where i am now and I think that's the biggest thing for me is networking. You can read as many books as you like. You can buy as much and invest in as much as you like. But without communication and networking and trying to surround yourself with like-minded people and people who are smarter and more clever and better investors than you, again, more advice from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, it's really going to help help that progress for you. And, and doing that myself, I've seen so many gains. You know, if I didn't network with 365 and yourself, the stat collector, I probably would, never would have got the S&P 500 as an investment. So try and, you know, like I said, stick in your own lane. But if you find someone that's like-minded, that's got ambitious goals, motivated, it's great to network with the right people. And funnily enough, before I jumped on this call with you, the stat collector, I actually know a, a gentleman who's very successful. He lives near me and I know, I know him um through people and people and see him every now and then and he's a multi-millionaire and he's got a very successful business multiple properties and i've spoke to him in the past about property advice and he gave me fantastic advice that was very valuable and i've actually messaged him like i said recently today and uh, i've asked him for some financial advice uh you know like an accountant where could i find a good up-to-date accountant and i'm going to actually ask him if he would like to go out for dinner i'm going to take him out for dinner if he's up for it pay for him maybe go for an indian or a curry or whatever he wants um and 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 seep as much knowledge from him as possible because it is so valuable networking with people who are better and more financially invested than yourselves because you can only gain good things from that so yes it might cost me a dinner out but what i will gain from that specific networking moment will be a well worth it above and beyond yeah no you're absolutely right there um i, I couldn't agree more it's a brilliant idea to to take him out to dinner and just uh you know just try and uh 
expand your network a little bit more there that's uh that, that's a great idea and uh, and utilizing what you've got around you i mean that's what everyone needs to do you know uh like we've both said uh, throughout the uh throughout the video today everyone everyone's cir cir situation is different everyone's circumstance is different so you have to be in uh investing to what to your strengths that you have around you uh one thing i wanted to uh to just mention uh on the video though is uh and i i, I know i'm going to speak for both of us here and just say if you know if any of you are new to investing and you do want a little bit more advice or you do have any questions that you just like an answer to uh you know both me myself and future investments have our email addresses in our in the descriptions of all our videos so feel free to to you know send us an email if, if there is anything you want to know and uh, we are both more than happy to help i'm, I'm pretty happy i'm pretty sure you'll agree with that yeah absolutely great there mate i'm really pleased you did that um yeah always reach out i've got my email in every every video d description i upload um and don't don't feel like you can't reach out because i'm very welcoming and i'm always happy to give advice like the stat collector said you can email him if you'd rather email the stat collector or i'm sure 365 would love to hear from you um so yeah as i say network if you can and if you've got any questions maybe maybe it's to do with the s p 500 maybe it's as simple as should i buy a one tenth ounce gold coin or a quarter ounce gold coin chuck us an email whichever person you want and we'll, and we'll all do our best to help you um but yeah i mean really good topics today are you are you looking at him doing any more sort of uh, investments maybe other stocks and shares or are you quite happy with where you're at at the moment I'm not happy with where I where I'm at at the moment. There are things I want to uh, to get invested in, but uh, the the property is, is is taking a lot. I mean, I was supposed to be buying myself a quarter ounce gold Brit at the end of March, which I couldn't do because uh, I you know I was closing on on the uh, on the property. So um, I've got renovations to do. I've um, you know I've got a lot of lot of cost to put into the property right now. So uh, I'm not looking to put much into it i my goal is to get through this without going into my investments if i can do that it, it you know that's that's absolutely fine if i can put a little bit hit more in here and there while i'm doing that that's brilliant um i i'll i will always be picking up little bits of silver here and there because that's the hobby of it in me i i, I love you know i'm a, the name stack collector i stack and i collect you know i, lo I love to collect um silver coins um so you know I, i'll never i'll never stop buying physical gold and silver uh because of a collector in me and it's not it's all it, it gives me a little bit of uh of you know of uh security knowing that because of that aspect of my personality i'm always going to be you know buying something that is an investment and that you know that will always be growing on that part yeah. of my portfolio um if i you know if if i see anything drop ridiculously where it, it, it you know you have to buy now then then yes uh i'll keep dollar cost average in my s p 500 uh i i also as as yourself i have an nsi premium bonds account um i i put a little bit of money in every month into that uh that's the account i'll dip into quicker than my investments I, I still don't like dipping into that because every time I, I take money out of that it's like well that's a lottery ticket that uh, that could have won for me so uh, I you know I, I, it, it bothers me when I start take, taking things out of my investments at the moment because I am I am looking to grow but unfortunately right now with uh, with everything else I've got going off at the moment it's uh, it's going to be a case of uh, just you know just wait until I'm on top of things and then hopefully I can start to really grow my portfolio up further from that but saying that I, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at at the moment i've uh you know i've been able to get into the property without any without cashing anything in or closing down any of my savings accounts so um you know that's that's more than enough for me right now yeah fantastic i love that and definitely good to try not dip into those investments to to pay for you know for other things because those investments those savings are so important that's again more advice from rich dad poor dad um so you're already you know what you're doing. Very, very smart advice for anyone listening there. And I love the fact that you touched on the NSNI premium bonds. I'm a massive fan of those. I think it's really important to keep investing fun uh, because at the end of the day, life's, life, you know, life is important and it's important to keep life fun. So keep investing fun. And, and the NSNI premium bonds, they are fun. If you don't know what they are, if you're in the United Kingdom, they're very easy to get. It's a government-backed savings account. 
And essentially what it is, is instead of them paying you interest every single month, there's a lottery and you, two people every month can win a million pound and there's loads of people a month that can win over a hundred thousand pound and then it goes down and down and down and you can regularly win 25 pounds 75 pound 100 pound so although you're not getting interest you can actually uh make a if the interest rates are bad in the bank which quite often they normally are you can actually make more in a year if you're fortunate uh by winning uh, then it then it would be just sitting in a standard bank with maybe like 0.15 percent um and again it keeps it fun you know every month you check your check your app and see if you've won on that draw uh and it is very fun i myself have won quite a bit um obviously nothing ridiculously big because you you guys would hear about it but i've won you know on, on one occasion i won 175 pound i've run many 25 pounds I do find that there is a period of money where if you're over, a cer over a certain amount, your odds become better. If you've got over £25,000, you're almost winning every single month. Um, almost, not every, but almost every single month. Um, so yeah, it's great to keep investing fun. But I'm actually going to bring the episode to a close. We've brought on an awesome amount of topics we've talked about property we've talked about cryptocurrency which we don't often talk about we've talked about books which we we don't often talk about we've talked about gold silver platinum and palladium prices and we've also talked about should you buy property so on my end i've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation it's been very enjoyable as always and uh yeah i love talking to you mate and i love networking with yourself um, I'd rather do it with you than anyone else. It's fantastic. We get on so well. The viewers love it. It's it's just great fun. Um, so yeah, from me, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed watching. I'm going to hand the reins over to the stack collector. Yeah, no, thank you again for having me across the future. And and like you say, it's um, you know this is pretty much one of the highlights of my week. I love coming over here and and speaking to somebody who's also got a, you know a good mind for investing. Uh, it's great to bounce ideas off you and just basically you know chat. Just, well, it's a bit of a breeze really, as as it, as it were. Um, I've just remembered we're we're going to have to pick a winner uh, from the last right. So I'll just pop over to the comment picker and we want to pick a specific keyword which i believe should be stack the future and if we want to include replies and not allow duplicates so if i continue there was five people that entered last week. So I'm going to pick a winner and the lucky winner of the shilling and sixpence is Brad Beale, Stack the Future. So there you go, Brad. These two coins are now yours. So all you need to do is just uh, pop future investments in email with your address. He'll get that over to me and I'll get those out to him and post to you as soon as possible, Brad. Thank you very much for taking part and thank you to everyone else who took part as well. Uh, thank you to everybody who's took part and watched along with us today. It's been an amazing experience once again to connect with you all. But with that being the case, until next time, keep stacking, take care and goodbye.